Introducing the main functionalities of your app to your user can be really helpful and therefore we are building here a small round trip through our app so that the user knows the main functionalities. To get started, you simply go to your material app and then to your home property and wrap your page around a showcase widget. And this builder is also what you wrap around your homepage widget. And we make a use of a plugin, so you need to go to your pubspec jaml file and here you need to put the showcase view under your dependencies inside. After it, we go to the home page and here inside we want to create a global key. And this global key is later used to reference the widget which we want to showcase to our user. And we also create an init state method and here inside you call this showcase widget which comes from this plugin. And then you can start the showcase which means that you start the round trip through your app. And here you need to put then a list of keys inside and we want to put here the key one inside. Another thing which you need to do is to wrap this here inside of an add post frame callback method. And this is because the start showcase method uses here the set state. And normally within your init state method, you can never call the set state method. Therefore, you always need to wrap this here inside of this widgets binding. And now we want to start with the highlighting of the search icon here at the top. And therefore, I simply go here to our app bar to our icon button, which is exactly this button here on the right side. And I wrap it then around with this showcase widget, which also comes from this plugin. And here inside, you need to set then the key one inside, which we have defined at the top and which we also put inside of this start showcase method. Inside of your showcase widget, you also need to set here the description. And this is the text which will later show up. And now if I hot restart, you see that he is automatically highlighting here our search icon and also has put here this description inside, which we have defined here. And now he is doing this round trip every time at the start of our app, because we have set here this start showcase inside of our init state method. However, if you don't want to start it within your init state method, let's say you press on a button or something, then you simply copy this code and put it inside of this on press handler of this button. Next, we want to customize the style of our tooltip and therefore I go again to the showcase widget and here inside you can set a showcase background color, which is then the background color of our tooltip. And what you also can set is here a padding if you like, so you can add more space around your widget. And you can also change the text style. Therefore you have here this description text style. And I set it first of all to a color of white. And you can also make it bigger and give it a font weight bold. And then it looks like this. And now we want to make use of this style here, which we have defined for also other locations. For example, this location or also for this location. And therefore we want to move all of this code to a new class. Therefore I rename this showcase here to our custom showcase widget, which we want to create. And I also delete here all these properties inside, which we want to put inside of this custom showcase widget. Therefore I create here this new custom showcase widget. And this basically has the child property, a description, which is then later shown as the text and also the key which we need to set mandatory inside. And here inside we put then a build method with the showcase and put here all the attributes again inside. We exchange then here this description with our description field so that we can every time have a custom description. And we also put here our child property inside. Another thing is that I also put here this global key inside so that we can later customize it. Back at our icon search button, we put then again the global key inside. So this time we put here key one inside again and also our description. And now everything should work here fine also. We have now the advantage that we simply can copy this code here and also put it to another widget to highlight this widget. Let's now add it also to the bottom navigation bar. So we have here two items completed and incompleted and we will simply also add two keys for them. But first of all, I go to the bottom bar items. So we have here to do's and on the right side completed. And I wrap this icon with this custom showcase widget. And here I give it a different description. 
and I also do this for the second icon and I also give it a different description. Lastly, we want to add here also a tooltip for our floating action button. Therefore, I go to this floating action button property, which holds then our floating action button. And here we have this add icon, which is displayed here. And we simply wrap it inside of this custom showcase widget. And we also give it here a different description. Next, we go to the top of our homepage and create here three other global keys, which we want to add for each widget, which we have added now. And within the start showcase method, you also put all these keys inside. And now comes the most important part. We need to exchange all these global keys because otherwise you get here all the time this error in the console. And now we need to go here down and go to our bottom navigation bar. And here we need to set then the key three. For this one, we set the key four. And lastly, we go to our floating action button. And here we also set a different key. We set the key two. And now after we have hot restarted, you can basically tap here through and he will go to the second widget, which we have given the key to. So our floating action button has the key to, which comes then here in the order next. Then he will go to the key three, which is here our to do's item. And lastly, he will go to the key four and this is our completed icon. And basically, if you want to change the order of the round trip, then you need to change here the position of the keys. So let's say we take here the key two and put it to the end. And in our case, we have used the key two for our floating action button. And this means that our floating action button will also show up in the end. Let's try it out. So you will go first of all to the search icon, then to this bottom navigation bar and at the end to our floating action button. Now let's go to our custom showcase widget and customize the style of our tooltip a bit. Here inside in the showcase widget, you have also the option of the overlay color. And this is basically this background color during our round trip. And you also can set here the opacity so you can change the opacity level. For example, I put here 30% inside and then you see only 30% of this white color. If you like, you can also add here a title property and here you can basically define a text and then you also can give it a text style and this will look like this. So you have here at the top also the possibility to add a title and a title can be also a little bit bigger. Therefore, I simply add here a bigger font size and then you see that we have here also a title and below it we display the description. For our tooltip, we every time have here at the bottom this arrow and if you don't like this, then you can also put here this show error false inside and then it will simply hide this error at the bottom. We also have here all the time this animation which is going up and down. Then you simply add this property disable animation and set it to true and then the animation will stop and he will not play the animation anymore like you can see. And lastly, we want to go back to our main file and here we go to the showcase widget. And inside of it, you can then set this property auto play to true. And secondly, you can also set here this duration inside. And I set it here, for example, to three seconds. And now after hot restart, I don't need to click there anymore. He will automatically go to the next item after three seconds and will automatically play through this round trip. If you want to have more control over your round trip, then you also can set here this on finish callback. And now if I go here through our round trip and I go until the end, so let's say we go here and now I tap again, then you see that he has finished completely. And here you can basically put the functionality inside of what should happen if the user has finished the round trip. For even more control, you can also set here this on start and on complete. And here I will simply print it right now, the index to the console. And if you hot restart, he will start with this on start at zero. So he will show here the zero item. And now if I tap, he will complete the zero item and then he will start with the first item. So this is the first index. And now if I go further, he will print also the other indexes. And therefore you have here the complete control of what functionality you want to execute on the different steps. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up 
and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon. Bye.